The proposed redevelopment of Barnans Bay, Port Castries, Port Soufre, and the Soufre waterfront by Global Cruise Operator, Global Ports Holding, GPH, has been a matter of interest since the government of St. Lucia made the announcement last year. On Tuesday evening, a representative from GPH joined the chairman of the Soufre Regional Development Foundation, Ernest Auger, to address the community's concerns. The chairman of the SRDF urged members of the Sufra community to approach the proposal with an open mind. We observe there is potential. There is a lot, a lot of potential in Sufra as a tourist destination. We are just beginning to scratch the surface. We are yet to recognize the true potential of Sufra as a major tourism dollar owner we are yet to scratch that. We are yet to recognize the true potential. There is a lot of potential in Sufre, the waterfront, our natural sites, the springs, the peters. And so, our aim now is how can we take these assets and accrue much more benefit to the people of Sufre in particular and to the national post. The representative from GPH, Dr. Sean Matthew, explained that the plans for Sufra will be expansive. However, it will not affect any revenue already being collected by the Sufra Regional Development Foundation, SRDF, or the Sufra Marine Management Association, SMMA. According to him, GPH is the largest cruise port operator in the world and has assisted in improving the cruise facility for many countries around the world, including the Caribbean. Sufra, he says, will be no exception. So we have looked at the waterfront in its entirety. We have looked at it from um, the market all the way down to Barnes Drive. We've also looked at a, a beach facility that is towards the Anshastney side. And we, we are looking at providing to Sufra an amphitheater, boardwalks, increased berthing facilities. In fact, the intent and the initial designs have has the berthing facilities improved by more than 200%. Members of the but public you know, got the opportunity to fire their burning questions at the representative, all of which were answered. The tourism dollars seem to be just in the hands of few persons. And we think that there's a lot more that Sufre can benefit from the tourist industry. And we are concerned that, is this another play, and this time a foreign one at that, looking to exploit Sufre again. So how exactly will this project benefit the ordinary person in Sufre? In anything we do in any island that we go into, first and foremost, there are no foreign employ employment because we believe we can train our locals to get it done. So that's number one. When we look at the waterfront, um, we start off, say, the amphitheater, we, we come down, we clean, we clean, and we beautify the walkway. One will provide a number of kiosks all the way down to as far as we can go, maybe as far as the gas station. And that will be provided for the lease rental of local entrepreneurs. The key thing about the waterfront is that we are trying to create an attraction in itself to allow the tourists to see there as a location to come in as well as the stayovers and locals where they can interact with the Sufre um, population and actually enjoy another aspect of Sufre. According to Dr. Matthew, Tuesday's meeting was just the first phase of consultation with the community of Sufre. He says the goal upon completion of the project is for the reimagined Sufre waterfront to feature enhanced docking facilities and new retail spaces for local vendors. From the Sufre Regional Development Foundation, I am Genevieve Gonzague.